night on the boss lady. Oh, it is here, yes. It is here. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Lizzie Mudani Wanyaike, principal Nibs Technical College and the Emory Hotel, Kirireshwa. I didn't even know I was getting married. Actually, I thought I was visiting. Nobody believed in me. They thought I'm wasting my time. They meant business. Voted by my fans. Are these people renting uh, this space? I witnessed some of the bullets that are being thrown all over. I said, no, this is why I want to go. Have you ever told the story before like that? And this is the post lady. Aruiru at the Neves Technical College. I'm set to meet one Lizzie Mudoni, a very known woman. If you don't know her, well, you're going to find out right about now. So I'm going to have a sit down with her. We'll be taking rounds in her school and just get to find out how did she make it to be where she's at right now. Follow me. <laughs> Tonight we shall look at Lisa's journey to getting her institution, Nairobi Institute of Business Studies, and how it started. But before then, let's talk statistics. Colleges are two or three year post-secondary school institutions. They award certificates, diplomas, and higher national diplomas after successful completion of relevant courses. Courses offered by these institutions include business education, accounting, secretarial studies, nursing, teacher training, computer studies, journalism, media, design, culinary arts, foreign languages, tourism, and technical skills. Kenya has over 700 technical training centers, which include four national polytechnics, one technical teachers college, about 35 technical training institutes, and over 600 youth polytechnics, commonly referred to as village polytechnics, which are mostly concentrated in economically endowed counties and almost non-existent in arid and semi-arid areas. Back to the boss lady. Who is Lizzie Wanyoike? sit down with her in a bid to find out who this lady is. She has so much going on, certificates, and if you would, will take you through her office just to take a look at the number of pictures that we have with the dignitaries. She's a dignitary herself, according to me, so please do introduce yourself to our viewers before we carry on with this episode. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Lizzie Mudoni Wanyoike. I'm the founder and the principal I I'm st have still retained that, that uh, title so that they can know I'm still in charge. <laughs> <laughs> CEO uh, of Nairobi Institute of Business Studies, but it's now NIBS Technical College. Uh, we have also developed, we had another project uh, called the Emory Hotel in Kirishwa, which is part of NIBS. 
uh, mainly uh, to get visitors from all over the world, but at, at, and also have our students have a taste of working in a hotel that is international, international, and where they can gain experience, especially towards the end of their of their course. So uh, basically, I have other titles because I'm a mother um, and a mother of three uh, children, and also with several grad children, about eight of them for the time being. I'm very passionate about the youth because my children are all doing well. Uh, and I would want to see that all parents are feeling the way I feel, happy about their kids, about their children, whether they are grown up or whether they are small. So I normally concentrate on something we call parenting, mentorship, and also youth empowerment empowerment more than anything else youth empowerment but today we, we we want to know lizzie as a person where was she born where did she grow up how did she get to this particular point where you're having a school you're becoming a principal so you'll take it just step by step lizzie if i give my whole story it's long as you can hear mm. and uh, but i i was born far back in the days of the emergency uh, when we were fighting for our freedom. So I witnessed some of the bullets that were being thrown all over. Uh, my father was a chief, but was discovering, was discovered. The, the, the Mzungus got to know that uh, he was also helping the Maumau rebellion, so he was jailed uh, for at least seven to nine years. I can't remember, I was a bit young. When he came back is the time I got to know who my father, how he looked like. And uh, so we grew up in, uh, we were first of all sent into those villages, which in other words are concentration camps where they can control uh, the people. And we were, that's why I went to primary school. I went into a local school that was Kadukeine uh, Primary School. And uh, then after independence, uh, I, I was still in, in the primary. Then we, we, I went to high school where I now left uh, the village life. Although we had moved back, we had been allowed to move back into our regional homes. So I went to Kahuhia Girls. Now, in, when I was growing up, my, 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 my dream was to become a, a teacher. I continued feeling that our, my dream of becoming a teacher was going to, uh, was going to die, but it did not die that time. And then I had another dream. I used to say, I used to say, I used to like the way my mom and my dad used to live. They may have been having their problems, but we never saw anything. Yeah. Whenever they had any maybe misunderstanding like it is in others, they would wait until we, were all, we all fall asleep because we were staying in small, small houses. The other dream was to, when I grew up, I want to become a, a secondary school teacher, and then I want to get married, and then I'll have five children, and that is what I stuck to until now my older days. With her dreams so big, did she get to be a teacher and how was she able to get into business? My, my journey to becoming a teacher was not as, as straightforward as I thought because I actually did not, uh, was not admitted to a high school teacher training. I was, I was admitted to a primary and I refused. So I did not go, I just cried at home. But then uh, later on, I, I, my parents managed to take me to another school, far away in Nakuru High School, whereby I did a business course that is more or less like a secretarial course. And when I, when I finished one year, then somehow uh, some, some, some Canadians came to our school and they were looking for people who have done that course, who are willing to be trained as business uh, business education teachers in high schools. And I was so excited, I was the first one to jump into that That was game. a very good opportunity. It was an opportunity that just God brought it to me. And that's why I tell people, young people, that uh, you may not get into your dream the first time, yeah, but yeah. keep on dreaming. Don't give it up. Get whatever comes your way. Maybe that's it was, that was the it's best way. You, yeah. It's leading you somewhere. Towards, yes. Uh, people get lost because they lose hope. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a nurse. I was not admitted in a nursing school. Mm -hmm. And then you lose hope, you don't know what to do. So anything else you do, you think it's a waste of time. 
But I would tell the, the youth that do what comes if you didn't get what you wanted. And through that, you end up where you want to be. Yes. So when the, when the Canadians came in, yes. you, 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 they, they trained you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the, we saw we were we recruited to go to Kenyatta College, which, was, which is Kenyatta University. Right. And that is where now they train the S1 uh, teachers. Mm -hmm. So we, we finished the course and I was posted to State House Road Girls High School uh, where I taught very briefly because by the time I finished college, fortunately for me, uh, there was a nice guy who had spotted me oh. and uh, I, I, in those days, <laughs> those days, the men who are not the men we have, these, the boys we have around, they meant business. <laughs> they were good, they meant business and um, when they meant businesses, they could wait for you for as long as as, they are, as we are ready. So for this one, I did not know it was leading to marriage uh -huh. because I had not planned my ma ma marriage so soon. But when I finished college, he came and uh, sort of like gave me a lift to his own house. Uh -huh. And that's how I got married. Just like that? Just like that. And uh, I didn't even know I was getting married. Actually, I thought I was visiting. <laughs> and it's, uh, you know, I was too naive, you know, grown up from the village, gone into a high school, boarding high school, gone into a high school, another one, you that is, strict. I was not exposed to the world at all. To the world at all. Sometimes I say it was good for me, I don't know. I think it was good for me because this, this guy was good. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he treated me very well mm -hmm. and uh, he was okay, he could take care of me. Uh, so after um, t uh, teaching for one year at uh, State House Road, I resigned and then I went back home. You just started? Yeah, I just started. You know, I, I was to have a baby. So now I, <laughs> I, I had the baby and uh, there are no problems with taking care of us and I stayed home uh, for about an year and then I felt no. Um, I did not say that I want to be a housewife. Mm -hmm. And again, even at home, I did not have to do anything, you know. Uh, so I felt that uh, I needed to look for something. So I looked for a job. Mm -hmm. And I got a job in one of the colleges, main colleges those days in town, which was called Temple College. Now out of a job, how does she get back on her feet? When we come back, we delve into how she managed to secure her investments and end up with a renowned college.